This is Twit. Here's the, the king of the Odin project. Odin himself, Josiah Zayner. <laughs> hey, the what's up, guys? Great to be here. <laughs> the All Father. Uh, the Odin, the dash Odin.com biohacker. What is a biohacker? Do you uh, like that term? Yeah, so in order to get the moniker biohacker, it's kind of like Fortnite. You have to defeat 100 other weak, weaker <laughs> biohackers. <laughs> and the winner, he gets the term biohacker attached to <laughs> That can be only one, I understand. No, actually, it's just kind of like a term we use to describe somebody who's doing science non-traditionally, yeah. so outside of like a big corporation or an academic lab. But we should uh, explain <laughs> that you have real credentials, PhD in molecular biology, in biophysics, you worked at NASA for a while. You know, it sounds like a boring job, modifying organisms for life on Mars, not that interesting. Yeah, my mom, she cried when I left NASA. <laughs> <laughs> I had to convince her I was doing but something. But mom, I'm not time. going to Mars. I'm just going to send things to Mars, right? <laughs> she was like, "Why are you? Why are you leaving NASA?" I told, I, you know why? Because she could tell her friends, "Oh, my son works at NASA." Yeah. Now she has to say, "Well, what? I think, I, what is? What do you tell your mom?" I think when I was 16, I tried to apply to be an astronaut, and they rejected me. <laughs> So, <laughs> I think she was uh, yeah. knew when I was a little kid I wanted to be an astronaut. But uh, now, what she she tells people that I'm probably crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, when I say you ate poop, that really sounds crazy. Except you didn't <laughs> exactly. But it, but so I just want to start with that. This is something you did a while ago. Yeah, right? no, it's an interesting topic, and I think it gets back to the whole like biohacker thing. So. Biohacking, I kind of look at it as a way to hack biology, right? right. So it's like... I think it's the new frontier, yeah, obviously, right? totally. With CRISPR, genetic modification, this is what's happening. Yeah, so I grew up in like the computer hacker movement in the late 90s, early 2000s. Might, might have gone a little before that, depending on who you were. And people were just, you know, there's all this information available on the internet that people could read, learn. You know, I taught myself how to... Com program computers. It was really exciting. Yeah. I remember those days. Oh, the Homebrew Computer Club. I remember, you know, talking to Kevin Mitnick and he talked about dumpster <laughs> oh, diving yeah. for phone for manuals. Kevin. So oh. it was exciting. Yeah. But this is the next thing. Yeah. Is it there really that is. same spirit? So when you look back at like computers and you know when people the personal computer revolution came around, it was like computers were only for people in big companies, right. like IBM, uh, yeah, was what computers were. Yeah, the before mainframe. the home and, computers. And, and, and you could, you had to have an air conditioned facility with a raised floor. You couldn't have your own computer. Yeah, and the programming languages, you know, maybe it was really hard to learn. Punch no cards, cards, Fortran, mm -hmm. Cobol. Yeah. Yeah, and biology has kind of been that same way, right? Where yes. it's like, yes, you if have you to be wanted, Genentech. Yeah. Or NASA. Or NASA. <laughs> Yeah, or, or, you know, a well-funded university to do this stuff. And now the prices are starting to drop, the knowledge is starting to get out there, and you get a lot of people in their homes who are trying to, you know, hack stuff, right. experiment on their own, and try to figure out new ways in which they can solve problems that, you know, the world can't because there's not enough, you know, there's not enough throughput. Can you really do serious work, though, without having a big lab and a big institution? Oh, totally. The thing is, is that lo a lot of the stuff I did at NASA... I can do in a lab that probably costs, you know, five thousand no dollars. I mean, obviously, wow. there's equipment that costs a lot of money and right. experiments that cost a lot of money. A lot of stuff like that you can outsource to other people right now. Mm -hmm. Eventually, the prices on that stuff will probably drop also. But yeah, it's it's totally cool the stuff you can do really to like engineer organisms, you know, bacteria, yeast, things like that. Everybody's so, playing around with. Even fecal plants. transplants about bacteria, right? Yeah. We all have a biome. It's a it's a big mass in our stomach of bacteria. That's what helps us digest, but it impacts our health, even our mental health, in all sorts of ways that we're just learning about. Yeah, it's all over our body, you know? That's what when I was talking about, like, the computer thing. I, I don't think we're like computers, but the kind of hacking thing you can think about, right? We're covered in bacteria. It's all on us and in us. Yeah. Right? Everywhere. We couldn't live without it. Yeah, we're like this symbiotic being, you know? It, you probably, there's probably an old Star Trek character or something <laughs> that looked like, oh. Bacteria man. <laughs> e. coli man. Yeah, so you ate poop? <laughs> I'm sorry, I keep getting back to that. Wow. But, but you can't bring it up and then not 
talk about it, right? You can introduce new bacteria into your biome and change the way your body processes. A much better way to put it. Exactly, yeah, that's really interesting. Uh, well, and one of the things I like to say is that I'm so glad that eating poop is not the thing I'm most well known for. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be. Despite <laughs> Leo's attempts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but did it help? You were having gut problems. Yeah, did it help? so I was having gut problems, IBS gut problems and like a lot of people experience oh, it's the this worst. stuff. It's the worst. A lot of people where you're going to the bathroom all the time. Yeah, it's horrible. Gross stuff like blood in your stool. And you don't feel good, most importantly. You just feel crappy. Yeah, and so, you know, there have been a lot of experiments on this stuff. A lot of it's, you know, you know, when you start to get to medical experiments on humans, even ones that are, you know, relatively safe. They're big ethical issues. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of ethical stuff behind it, so people are kind of like, oh, you know, we haven't run a clinical trial on this yeah. stuff yet, but there was a lot of promising research on it. And many of the biggest medical breakthroughs have come from scientists experimenting on themselves. This is a well-known, common process. Yeah, it's to push those boundaries, right? It's when a scientist sees that there's evidence to support an experiment, right? Yeah. I, I kind of view all the stuff I do kind of like, you know, more engineering. Interesting. So you like shoot a rocket, up to space or something, and maybe it blows up on the first time, right? But you expect to try again. Yes. Right. So these experiments, I usually see the though, same it, way. the rocket isn't you, and you, and you and you're not blowing up. That's why it's a little. But you know what? You know oh, what you're totally. doing. It helped your IBS, by the way. Oh yes, yeah, seriously. Like I, I can't believe we're not so. recommending this as a personal process. But we you actually can read more about it. On I actually did. Website. Yeah, yeah. Scientific experiments. You know, like. Purified the DNA from the the bacteria before right. and after, sent oh, it off to a national lab, and had them look at the changes. So you know what you're doing. This yeah, is, yeah, don't yeah, try yeah. this at home, folks. <laughs> so, so let's talk about CRISPR because CRISPR has been a big breakthrough in genetic modification. Right? Yeah, yeah, CRISPR is pretty crazy. It's you know the hot genetic modification topic, and if you want to talk, it's probably like a. Uh, the JavaScript of 1999 was JavaScript. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. So it's early days. Yeah. But it, it allows you to uh, effectively cut gene sequences from one DNA strand and put it into another DNA strand. Is that right? Oh, it's yeah. It's like cut and paste for DNA. Kind of, yeah, totally. So personally, you know, I'm more of a Perl kind of guy, Perl programming. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> Good so, man. Larry so Wall would approve. I've been all old school and, you know, at NASA and stuff. And before I they did... use Pearl at NASA? Tell oh, me no, I don't know. Too. I hope not. Oh, yeah. No, I'm all talking the, about the genetic engineering. <laughs> all the great astronomy <laughs> stuff is... Fourth. It's, it's all done in fourth. That's okay. Um, Python. Yeah. Oh, Python. Yeah, I don't understand. Well, no, so, like, I compare... I compare CRISPR to like the Python, and I was doing all the stuff in Perl in genetic engineering. Ah, and I was like, you know, get it. plotting along, doing all this yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. And, and it was like good, but it didn't work. You were work. doing recombinant DNA in the old school stuff. Yeah, and then I learned about this CRISPR stuff, and I was like, wow, that's pretty awesome. Except it uses white spaces instead of curly brackets, so it took me a while to understand. <laughs> Four spaces or a tab? Which, anyway, no, let's not go into that. Let's not go there. So you've been able to, actually, I know you crowdsourced kind of a do-it-yourself CRISPR lab, kind of? Yeah, so my goal with all the stuff I do is not only to help myself, but it's kind of to bring access to people. Wow. Right? So I want people to be able to have access to this, you know, science and uh, genetic engineering stuff that they haven't had before because it's like you hear all this stuff you read about it in the news and they're like yeah you know maybe we'll see it in 10 or 20 years and I, i'm kind of an impatient person you know all hack all good hackers are yeah like uh who is talking about the apps jason on there and yeah. he said like you know turn off your notifications you know it's me i'm like notification oh my gosh <laughs> you know so do, so he listen to him because obviously you're going to get less done if you do that all the time <laughs> So do so, you, uh, tell me what kinds of things you can do. The, the CRISPR that you, you were selling was not for modifying yourself. No, obviously. no, no, no. So we don't sell things directly for people to be able to modify no, themselves. No, no. Um, you know, with enough this knowledge. Is, this is more like a uh, chemistry kit that you can learn about it. Kind of, yeah, right? so this kind of gives people an introduction to genetic modification of nice. organisms. Nice. And then if they want to do, you know, more complicated experiments, they can learn. So it's kind of cool. like an introduction to programming or something. Cool. You know when when you do an introduction to programming and they're like, "All right, you know, 
Type in these. Yeah. Type in these. It's stuff the hello then, world for genetic engineering. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's a great example. Yeah. It's kind of like the hello world for genetic engineering. <laughs> so where people can like learn how to do this stuff, and they have example experiments, yes. so they don't need to come up with it on their own. Would you say a smart high schooler could uh, could do this? Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. We 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 sold kits to high schoolers. We sold kits to you know colleges, universities. Wow, that's cool. Ev everybody. T h e dash o d i n dot com. If you wanna. Take a look at these. Yeah, we try to make them. You don't have to have any experience to use these kits. That's what we want it to be, right? We want to break down the barriers that's stopping people from getting involved in that's neat. genetic. Because, you know, it is kind of the future, right? You have all this AI stuff and you have all this stuff. And I think genetic engineering is the other big thing that's going right. to, like, really change technology. So you are doing stuff to yourself, though, with CRISPR. Yeah. You know, I, here's the thing is there have been technologies like CRISPR. Um, similar, and they've taken 10 or 15 years to reach human beings, right? Yeah. And not because they weren't safe or things like that. It's just because, you know, maybe there wasn't enough money invested in it. Maybe people weren't interested enough. Maybe they didn't see the companies didn't see how they could make money. And hearing all this promise of CRISPR and seeing, you know, how great it is, like, it's slow getting out there, you know? Every two years, companies are like, well, two years, we're going to have something out there. But that's understandable. From a company and a governmental point of view, that's understandable. Yeah, no, it totally is, right? That's appropriate. In fact, this is illegal in some countries to do this to yourself, Oh, right? I mean, in some countries, it's illegal to even, you know, mix DNA with any type of organism. Right. They're scared. Much less Germany, a good example. They're, they're terrified. But now, what yeah, about Germany the U.S.? Can do we can go to jail for using some of our kits. No kidding. Yeah. Oh, that's you too bad. Go to jail. Um, wow. So no, don't buy, in the US, not available in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> in the U.S., um, they're pretty lenient on these things because you know they look at what harm these you know the organisms that are engineered right. can cause, right. and they've determined that the harm is you know basically See, nothing. You're so. confident that no, this isn't going to create some you know terrible monster that's going to get loose or a disease or anything like that. You don't, you're not worried about that. Actually, I'm kind of hoping I had crazy Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> what did you inject? I was trying to turn you, myself you injected into one. In, I'm really into pizza. I love pizza. You injected a, mo a modified gene. What was it to do? Yeah, so what I was trying to do was, you know, I was trying to push this CRISPR thing forward. I, I kind of view it like the four-minute mile, right? Nobody could run the four-minute mile until somebody did. Here's, here's video of you doing this, you insane person. <laughs> and then when somebody ran oh that four-minute mile, yeah. right, all of a sudden everybody else was breaking yeah. that barrier. Yeah. And so I thought, well, let me see what I can do. So, you know, I read the scientific literature, looked at clinical trials, looked at experiments that other people were doing, and found out, like, wow, there's stuff that I can do for inexpensive wow. and test it out on myself. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, it, you know, and, and I looked, I, you, know, you know, it is, but I, I looked at the safety, you know, I, like obviously I'm Are not you, trying to hurt myself or but anything you, like that. But you're a little bit of a risk taker? You're kind of living with the idea that it might have made you sick? Um, or you feel confident that it's safe? I, I'm actually not too big of a risk taker. Good. Good. Your so, mom will be happy to hear that. <laughs> so when I, you know, maybe when I was a kid, but I, I had this one bad, you know, experience when I tried to jump, you know, jump off this cliff into some water and I slipped. And I was like, never again. Ooh, never doing yeah. anything risky ever yeah. again after that. Good. And now the riskiest thing I, I did was uh, walk through the tenderloin. That's risky. <laughs> Don't do that again. That is risky. Um, so. <laughs> but no, so I looked at the safety on this stuff and, you know, based on the, the data out there and... You know, I try to trust the science um, as much as I trash talk it, but, you know, I try to trust it. And it seemed that it would be no more, you know, harmful to me than, say, smoking a cigarette or something like that. So yeah. I decided to try to trust the science. And what were you, what was the, uh, what did you think might happen? So the goal of the experiment was to actually use CRISPR to modify a gene in my body called myostatin. Now this gene, it prevents muscle from growing in your body. Kind of like if your muscle was growing all the time, you would take up so many calories. You'd have to just eat constantly, yeah. right? But you look jacked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a good trade-off right Might there. be worth it. Look, at here's a dog. This yeah. is from your website. Yeah, exactly. On the left, no myostatin. 
on the right, just a normal dog. That's that's. We're all on the right, right? Yeah. <laughs> we, we yeah. Wanna I want to look like the dog on the left. How do I do that? <laughs> No, yeah, it wasn't so much that I, I wanted muscle. It was just like a good proof of concept. They've shown yeah. this worked in other other animals. How, what would be the test to see if it worked? You test your own DNA, or yeah. So there's a, a couple different tests. Like obviously, you can try to see if your muscle gets jacked. I, I injected just a small intramuscular. You weren't region. trying to get beefed up. So if I saw something, you know, unknown, the other thing you do is you, you know, purify your DNA from your body. And so it's your own DNA. Yeah, you test it and see. And you wrapped it in a polymer that would allow that DNA to invade existing cells and modify their DNA, which is wild. It really means you could inject new DNA that would change some cells. Yeah. So this wow. is actually done a lot. You know, there have been like over 400 clinical trials in the U.S. that have used similar techniques. So it's not something that's just like. I wish I was a genius and came up with this all on my own, but I'm just kind of copying everybody else. The thing that I did was I attempted to use CRISPR, which nobody else has attempted to do as human. Interesting. Yeah. We are really on the brink of something, aren't we? I, I, you know, I really think we are. Um, you know, it, it really reminds me of the early days of the internet, right? BBS, AOL. Those were fun times. I remember those days. <laughs> and like, Everybody could feel it when you yeah. went on. I remember the first you time I went online, happening. like you could yeah. just feel it. Yeah. Right? I mean, first time online, I think it was in a, a Star Trek role playing chat room on <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sounds no. like the internet. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, this is so yeah. awesome. You remember that, right, Jason? Oh, yeah. yeah absolutely. We've all experienced that the first time. Yeah, right? and, that, and that I was thinking about 30 years ago when I was on a computer BBS, right? Yeah. Um, and you learn the rules and you learn how to communicate. <laughs> And you also get that sense that eventually everybody's going to figure this out and it's going to change the world, which it now has, yeah. right? Like now and everybody's now want, on the internet. We so. want to do something nobody else is doing. Let's find something new. Right. You want to inject some CRISPR, Jason? No, thank you. <laughs> I'll wait for the home game. I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll inject the CRISPR. You eat the poop, okay? <laughs> no. All right. No, Sounds no. good. <laughs> good I, I got, I got what do you, what do you want to do next? What's your next experiment? I don't know. Uh, I, I'm really just focused on getting stuff out to people, yeah. like DNA literacy. I want I, people to, yes, to yes. understand how this stuff works. Just like, yes. like, I never took a computer class, and I'm sure most people nowadays never took a computer Self -taught. class. Self-taught. Right? Yep. You had a computer in front of you, you used it, yep. you learned how to use it by getting your hands you know, dirty with it. And I think the same thing can happen with DNA and genetic engineering. We get this stuff out to people, you know, People can learn how to use it, experiment wow. with it, and you know, then we have our next generation of scientists and medical doctors who are just way beyond what any of us could do right now. So it's the, in effect, the uh, Apple One of uh, genetics. You can go to the-odin.com, <laughs> pick yourself up an Apple One. You know what, get two, save one so you can sell it for a million dollars in 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> And use the and use the. <laughs> Don't other. open it up. <laughs> you could. You've got everything. New on box. You can create your own whole lab, right? With all this stuff. Oh yeah, no, no. We actually sell like whole lab kits to people. I love this. Um, for I think it's around two thousand dollars. So you can just uh, build a lab and start messing around with. Yeah, it. start doing molecular biology and genetic engineering in your home, and it's totally legal. You know, we we don't sell anything Except to in anybody. Germany. <laughs> Don't do it in Germany. Okay. Yeah, we wow. try to just get it out to people so they can do stuff. I think this is great. Fascinating stuff. Josiah, I really appreciate your coming by. Josiah Zayner is a biohacker, the CEO at the-odin.com. His Twitter account, the number four L-O-V of science. For love of science. Who doesn't? We love science. Thank yeah. goodness for science. And you know, if you think back, I can think about so many times that scientists wanted to do human experimentation, uh, but you know, that's difficult, so they did it to themselves. And we, a lot of the, a lot of the advances I, that we have, came from scientists who were willing to do that. So Nobel keep, prizes and everything. Nobel prizes. Not that I, I hope to be up there. You know, I just, just want to push things forward a little bit. Yeah, I love it. Thank you, Josiah. I really yeah, appreciate it was you great coming to be by. Here. It's very nice to meet yeah. you. Oh my God, you're strong. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs>